thought joy was about having fun with my friends, you know, hanging out, um, being with me. And I don't think we often think about joy that way. We wait for it to happen, we wait for something funny to happen. Good morning lovelies. Today I am going to be heading out and about so I thought I would take you with me. I'm having a little bit of a treat day or maybe you'd call it a solo date which is something I like to do you know every month or every couple of weeks or so just to spend some time with myself and do things that I enjoy. So today I want to go to a cafe and I will take my book with me because I love reading in cafes, it's a real treat. And I also want to do a little bit of book browsing, maybe some book buying because we're coming to the end of February now so I'm starting to think about what I want to add to my spring reading list which is very exciting. I've had a nice slow start to the day and you would have seen I've been doing some journaling which is a a new newish hobby that I've really started enjoying and doing more of in 2024. I think it's a wonderful way of inspiring my creativity and it's also a really fantastic form of self-care but it's something that I'm still quite new to and sometimes I feel a bit at a loss on what to write about so I decided to watch a Skillshare class this morning all about journaling and Skillshare are kindly sponsoring this week's video. If you've watched my channel before you've heard me rave about Skillshare more than once, they are my favourite online learning platform. It's a fantastic place that connects expert teachers with students and has stackable lessons which means you can learn at your own pace. It's been really useful for me when it's come to building my creative career and I especially have enjoyed their classes about creative writing and also filmography and it's also somewhere I go when I want to pick up a new hobby so I've used it for watercolour painting and now journaling. One of the features I most enjoy with Skillshare is their learning paths. This is where Skillshare have curated lots of similar classes together from a whole range of different teachers to help you master a new skill. I think this is a great idea because it saves you time looking through all of the classes and it's also introduced me to some new teachers who I've enjoyed watching. The learning path that I'm currently working my way through is reconnect with yourself through guided journaling. I've already completed the first lesson by Jordan Son visual journaling, drawing of feelings. This was a really fun way to journal. It's not something that I would do naturally because I'm not much of a drawer, but I really liked the teacher's kind of way of introducing it and making it a lot more accessible for beginner artists. And then this morning I started the class writing for self-discovery, six journaling prompts for gratitude and growth. So the first prompt was really simple and it was essentially making a list of things that bring me joy. So I've got things like my morning cup of tea, listening to our local blackbird that started singing, starting a new book, making soup on a Sunday, Day, having clean floors, which is something I really enjoy. I really cannot recommend Skillshare enough and I know a lot of you now enjoy using it but if you haven't tried it before then you can click on the link in my description and the first 500 people to do so will get a one month free trial which I think is definitely worth doing. Thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. Before I head out I thought I would give you a quick outfit of the day. I'm wearing a dress from Sea Salt Cornwall and I actually got this second hand, I thrifted this. And then this jumper is from Olive and again Again, I thrifted that and I got that on Vinted and I'm actually wearing <laughs> another jumper underneath because it's cold today and this is part of my merchandise. You can get this design on my T-Mill store and all the products are organic cotton. I've got this really sweet necklace that my friend got me for my birthday. I think she got that from Etsy. And I'll be pairing this with my favourite Vivaya boots. And then for my makeup I get most of my makeup from Merit which are a wonderful makeup brand as they're all vegan, cruelty free and they're also a minimalist beauty brand. I store my makeup in this cute little bag from them which you get with your first purchase. And I should say this isn't sponsored but a lot of these products were kindly gifted which I feel very grateful for. So I've just got um, a little bit on my base and this is their minimalist complexion stick and I have this in the shade Bone. It's really easy to use, you just sort of dab it on and then I use a wee brush to blend it in. And then I have a little bit of blusher on and I've got there, I've got like a creamy blusher and I've got this in the shade Cheeky. I'm actually wearing mascara from Body shop, but I would like to get some of their Merit Mascara at a later point. And then I think my favourite of their products is actually their lipstick, so I have two, and the one I'm wearing today is in the shade Baby. It's kind of like a, a pinky shade, and I think it's quite quite subtle but I also love that their makeup is really nice on the skin as well, it doesn't feel too heavy. And I put my hair up because uh, I need a haircut basically, and it's just got a bit too wild, a bit too long, but I'm getting a haircut next week, so that will be a bit better. And now I think I'm gonna get my bits together and we are gonna head out.
I've decided to come to this Bayside Centre which is close to Grand Town on Spey and it's a little bit further out for me and so I don't come here often and thought it would make a nice change. It's got a wee cafe, or quite a big cafe actually of course and it's also a garden centre and has a gift shop with like some really nice locally made products so I'm going to go in and get myself a cup of tea. Well, that was lovely. Is there anything better than reading a book in a cafe with a cup of tea? It's really like one of my all-time favourite treats. And I did get a couple of small bits in the gift shop, which I will show you guys later. And I would just say, this is the book I was reading and it's getting like quite near the end now. So I'm like, oh, it's, oh, it's one of those books that's gonna be, I feel like quite a dramatic ending. It's a little bit of a like whodunit kind of book, uh, but yeah really enjoying this so I'll link this down below and speaking of books I think we are now going to go to some bookshops tiny home now had a really lovely day out thought I would share a few bits and pieces that I got so the first couple of bits I actually got from the space I sent her from the gift shop so I got this lovely gift card here um, so it was, there was a different like nature illustration for the different months of the year I thought that was really lovely and the artist Hannah Longmuir um, I obviously like really like her stuff because I also got one of her notebooks so I got this one here, I just thought that was really lovely and it kind of reminded me of me being out with Sky. It's got like tree designs on the back as well and I actually realised that I have another one of her notebooks that I have been using for my nature diary. It's something I started doing, I got this for Christmas um, and I've already like mostly filled this one up so I thought I can get another one. They're really good because they're really easy to like just slip in a bag when I'm out walking. I'm going to be talking about my nature diary next month in my tea time, my member tea time chat on my substack. Um, so I'll drop a link to my substack in case you wanted to, to join us there. But yeah, I really love this. Um, and she's got a few different designs so I can see me going through because they're not massively, massively long, but I really like them because this is really rough writing. I then go on to like write, write more of it digitally. So then I can just recycle these, which is great. And with the gift card, I'll either just keep it as something to put on maybe my pin board um, for March, or I might use it to create my March journal page, which is something that I've been doing every month and really enjoying. I just think that would be kind of lovely for a journal. And in terms of books, I'm a little bit mad. Um, I hardly ever buy <laughs> any new fiction books, um, but when I was in Waterstones, there was a couple that caught my eye and they were a part of their buy one, get one half price deal. And I was like, well, that's lethal. I've heard of this one. Um, the cloisters here and it essentially says it's like an, a gothic novel and it follows somebody who ends up working at the Met Museum of Art and it's got definitely a myth mythical kind of vibe to it because it's got stuff to do with like tarot cards and there's like toxic friendships and just had all, all the 
good things that I usually <laughs> usually love and I have always loved gothic reads but I think recently that I've been really um going through a real phase of enjoying them and what I liked about this one is actually set in the summer so I can read this in spring summer time and still like kind of get that kind of gothic vibes that I tend to get in the autumn winter and then this one um I don't know if I have heard of this but again it's a similar kind of cover you can see the kind of vibe I'm going for at the moment with my reading I just think some book covers are really really lovely but it basically follows um Mary who's the great niece of Victor Frankenstein so it goes back to the IT 18 goes back to the 1850s and she's in London and she's tried to get involved with like the latest scientific debates but obviously she's a woman in that time so it's quite difficult for her another kind of gothic kind of vibe I don't know whether I might not be I might be impatient let's say I might wait till autumn to read this but I'm thinking I'm probably going to be too impatient to do that so yeah these are both very very beautiful books so if you do live in the UK and you like water stones I have water stones near you uh maybe look these up because they're on deal at the moment and she also kind of gave me a um the cashier gave me like a book bookmark to go with this book so yeah that's really fun and then i did get a couple more so i got two books from the second hand bookshop i actually did get a couple more but i'm going to wait to share those with you because i want to share them with you in my getting ready for spring vlog which will be next i think beginning of march anyway um so i can share my like full spring reading list so i just thought i'd share these because these aren't necessarily spring like i just got verity because i have read this book but i borrowed it from a friend and so i don't have a copy of it and it's one of those stories that's really stayed with me it's my favorite colleen Hoover. I know she gets quite a bit of stick as an author. I understand a lot of her novels do have some issues from a kind of feminist maybe point of view, which I completely, completely um, respect. But I, I enjoy her as an author. I think this one in particular, I really, really liked. It was again, it was like kind of like modern day kind of gothic tale. Definitely, obviously had a romance, but it wasn't just about the romance, which I liked. Um, so I just thought I'd keep it because I want to try and keep some books that I really like inspired me ones that kind of stay with you um although we are going to put some more bookshelves <laughs> if i want to do that but i just thought as i saw it i'd be meaning to pick it up when i see it and then i can i probably reread this and this might be something i reread in the summertime because it's a nice easy read and then i got this one here humans humans by matt haig so i read a couple of his books now i read the midnight library last year which i loved and i also read i think it's on here how to stop time which i also loved um, not as much, I think, because just the theme, the Midnight Library, just suited me. As a book lover, I love the concept of it. So he writes, I don't want to say sci-fi, because that's maybe not quite right. I don't really know what genre to put him in, but he writes, he writes brilliantly. First of all, like he's a really, he's a really brilliant author, um, and he always has really unique ideas. And this one is essentially, I think, it's kind of, as you can see from the front, it almost got like an alien theme to it. And you follow the main character. He mentions that after an incident, one wet Friday night, he's found walking naked through the streets of Cambridge. He's a professor, and he's not feeling quite himself, and he feels lost amongst the alien species that is humans. So it, this is basically about finding out who he really is and where he came from. So it's quirky. All his work is quirky, but he manages to do it in quite a way that's quite believable as well. He's got pretty good strong characters so yeah thought this would be this is the kind of thing you can read in any season so um i'll read this when i fancy reading something a bit more quirky so i hope you enjoyed this vlog um i really enjoyed taking you guys along me along with me on a wee day out and remember if you want to try out skillshare and get that free trial then you can click on the link in my description to claim that i think i'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon potentially finishing my book um so yeah that's gonna be <laughs> a fun thing to do but other than that I will see you guys next time.